All right, so we're gonna talk about Viper design pattern. And I'm gonna keep it real. I think most tutorials on YouTube that discuss Viper design pattern are trash. I'm gonna be honest. I did a tutorial on Viper and it exactly wasn't the best. It worked, but it wasn't so great at really explaining Viper to people, you know? Um, People are still confused about, you know, the purpose of the interactor as well as the presenter. And it makes sense because um, no, not too many people really explain it thoroughly, you know? Um, and I think that people who understand it take for granted that your explanation, you know, makes it clear, but it doesn't. So... Let's get down to it. So I'm gonna really simplify this. We're gonna do an in-depth explanation of um, a Viper. Um, so, yes. Now, I, I've already explained this to you before. Viper stands for View, Interactor, Presenter, Entity, and Router. You know, the view is what you see and it's the user interface, right? Uh, the Interactor, only has the functions for the business logic, only, okay? The presenter makes calls to those functions and the and whatever business logic is supposed to do, whatever values it produces, it puts those in the view, right? So the presenter is kind of like the, the intermediary between the interactor and the view, okay? Now your entity, that's your custom object model. You're gonna use that for parsing your JSON response. And your router simply handles the navigation. But in this tutorial, we're, we're gonna leave entity and router out of it because you need to understand view, interactor, presenter, and why it's even important to have um, an interactor and a presenter. Why not just do MVVM, right? Okay. So here's the relationship between the view, presenter, and interactor, right? Here's your presenter. Here's your interactor. Here's your view, okay? Your view is, you know, your basic, your content view. <clears throat> your printer, your presenter, it's going to make calls. It's going to send stuff to the view, right? Your interactor is going to handle your business logic. So basically, say in this example, we're going to we're creating an app that, you know, basically takes a string and appends hello to it, right? Again, this is of course we could have done something more sophisticated, but I'm doing this for simplicity's sake because you need to understand how a presenter works with the view and the interactor. So in your view, you enter your name right? You pass this to the presenter that passes this to the interactor. The interactor has a function that basically appends hello to it, then, and you pass this back to your presenter. Your presenter passes this to your view. Now, why even have a presenter, right? Why don't you just have a function? Why can't I just call the function from here? Because the point of this is to decouple your functions, your business logic, which is your functions from your view, right? This makes the calls and places the whatever values in your view, right? This just has just the functions, nothing else. And this is beneficial for upkeep, scalability, and modulate modularity, and most importantly, testing, right? Testing and avoiding um, errors in the future. Okay. So now, again, I'm reiterating the job of the view is to display the UI. The job of the interactor is to have the business logic. The job of the presenter is to tie in with both the view and their interactor in order to keep them decoupled, okay? 
So in this example, we're going to create a simple app that merely appends hello to a name and returns it to the view, right? So basically, in order to simplify it, I'm going to remove the router and I'm going to remove the entity. Those will not be a part of this because I want you to understand the interactor, presenter, and view, okay? I want you to use closures instead of the delegate protocol pattern in order for each um, object or class to talk to each other, right? And we're gonna use simple functionality for basic illustration and understanding. Okay, so we'll be right back and we're gonna jump into this. Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling on this, right? So one thing you want to do is when you set up your Viper um, project, what you want to do is um, basically I started with a, a regular, regular uh, project, the basic content view, right, with the globe and all the the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Hello world. All right. And another thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I have repository, which I don't. I do not have a repository, right? So what I need to do is um on here and source control get new repository right i cr click create and that's all it takes to do to create a repository a git repository in xcode right so um now we have a repository and of course in my other tutorials i teach how to do this so so now what i want to say is um we're in here and we're gonna call this greetings home and modules. So this director is gonna be for our stuff that adheres to the Viper um, Viper design pattern, okay? And um, I also create this other this folder too because what you wanna do is you wanna have you know, you want to accommodate if you want to add some other patterns, but, you know, so I'm going to say um, greetings home. I try to use camel case when possible. I mean, you can run into problems not doing camel case, right? New group modules. Hmm modules right and then um this content view is going to go in here right so the content view is in here and we'll, let's go ahead and run it and we build successfully and it's there sees everything right so now um if you want to you can go ahead and go to our source control and do a commit right everything it is functioning, okay? Commit this and we're good to go, okay? So now what we wanna do is we wanna, we wanna change this because this is not what we want, but we also wanna do this. I do not want this to be called content view, I want this to be called greetings view, right? Because that's what this app does, it creates a greeting. So I'm gonna go here. Oh gosh, and so this thing is not letting me change right there, right? I'm going to say this greeting view, greeting view, and that's it right there. Boom, come off, come back, go back. Greeting view, greeting view. This is going to be called greeting view as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do this greeting view. Okay, G-R-E-E-T-I-N-G, greeting view, good. And of course, because we have this, this has to change, right? 
our preview, this has to change. So that works. Otherwise, it's going to throw um, an error. And this is creating instance of this struct. And so that has that name has to change as well. Greeting view, greeting view. Now, um, here up in this, this file right here, it's making a reference to greeting view, but it's content view. Content view no longer exists. So we got to say greeting view. Okay. Now, if I run this, everything should run again. Yep. So, okay. I, I don't actually don't feel like going back in and changing, you know, all this. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, where is my uh, editor options? So you can see your canvas or your preview. You know, so that's how you see your canvas and your preview, right? Click on that and then yeah, I see the canvas like I did before. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And this probably takes a long time. So I'm going to do to spare you guys your time. Okay. So there it goes. It's working again, right? Uh, I need to take, give me a drink of water real quick. Hold on. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and let's get down to the business. So I, I want this out of here. I, I don't want this anymore, right? I'm actually I'm gonna get rid of this canvas too. I don't want that. And we need to have uh, some variables, right? So basically we're gonna have a text, a text field, a button, and a label that displays our appended hello, whatever. Okay, and so I'm gonna create that at state. Again, if you're confused by this, I have created video tutorials that explain this for name. Right. And of course, you know, let's, let's explicitly say what this is, right? Because that's what I am saying. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to it. State. I'm going to make this public and you'll see why. All right. Okay, and I don't want this to be of type string. Okay, I'm gonna make this explicit and that warning should go away. So now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and um, so name greeting. Why? Because we have this text field. Okay, name. Okay. Excuse me. Text. Dollar sign name. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and put some padding on this. Um, this uh, right. So that should work right there. Dot padding. Padding should be nothing. Okay, dot text field style rounded border text field style. Okay, and um, yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna have a. We're gonna also create a button. Button's gonna say generate reading. <laughs> that really neat. You know, I get frustrated with um how touchy this uh 
this pad is, right? Right, greeting equals, right? Mm -hmm. Equals hello plus name, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Dot padding. Right, dot padding is zero. Let's go on to the next one down here. Right. Padding is zero. Foreground color. Dot foreground color. Dot white. Dot background color, background dot color dot black or blue, let's call it blue. We want you to see the color. dot corner radius, C O corner. Radius is eight, right? And text or greeting, okay? Dot padding, right? Is nothing, okay? Frame. Okay, dot frame is um with is two hundred height is fifty. Okay, and of course we'll create a border border. Right, color dot gray, comma, with one. Okay. And now we go here, and I'll just press this right here. And we should have our view, right? Right. And on top of that, you know, we should be able to, let's see. Melvin, All right, generate, and boom, we have that. So now we're gonna go ahead and redo this, and we're gonna do this completely different. And um, we're gonna you do this with um, Viper design pattern. So be back on to the next. <laughs>